For Milanko, this is Rediscovering the Power of Healthy Animals, the podcast that explores how healthy animals, from cats to cows, can help us overcome some of today's most critical challenges. I'm your host, Michelle Calvo Lorenzo. Welcome to our very first episode of Rediscovering the Power of Healthy Animals. On this podcast, we'll talk to industry experts, from nutritionists and psychologists to veterinarians and farmers, and we'll talk all about the incredible impact that animals have on our world. Through our discussions, we will see how healthy animals can be the X factor, or that game-changing variable that unlocks solutions to some of our greatest global issues like malnourishment, anxiety, and resource scarcity. As an animal welfare technical consultant at Elanco, I have the privilege of collaborating with industry experts from all around the world, and we work together to positively impact livestock welfare and enhance sustainable agriculture. My love for animals runs deep, and I'm surrounded by equally passionate people at Elanco every single day. Elanco is a global leader in animal health. Since 1954, we have been working to empower veterinarians, food producers, and all those concerned with animal health to provide them the tools needed to help animals live healthy lives. So as you can guess, we love animals, and we believe they have a much greater impact on our lives than what meets the eye. And this is exactly what we'll explore on this podcast. Today, we'll take a 30,000-foot view of this idea that healthier animals are the X factor our world is looking for. Then in the next few episodes, we'll take a deeper dive to examine the impact of healthier animals on our physical health, mental health, and the health of their environment. So why are we so passionate about rediscovering the power of healthy animals? How can they truly be the X factor? And why should you, the listener, care? Here to walk us through these questions and more is Elanco's own president and CEO, Jeff Simmons. As the head of Elanco for the past decade, Jeff has directed the company's transformation from a primarily U.S. feed additive company to a premier global player with a balanced and diversified business. Jeff grounds all our efforts in one central mission, and that is food and companionship enriching life. Jeff, we're here today to help our listeners rediscover the power of healthy animals, both pets and food animals. So can you take a few minutes and set the stage to this discussion before we dive in? What's the bigger picture of why we're here talking about this? Hey, thanks, Michelle. I'm excited about today as well. In bigger context, I've been with Elanco for 30 years now in different roles, working alongside colleagues from other businesses uh, that I know share deep commitments about animals and their health. But when I was in Eli Lilly, sitting around a table at the executive level, sitting next to leaders of oncology, uh, neuroscience, diabetes, it hit me. It was just kind of one of those moments that I remember distinctly to say, when I looked at the impact they were having on people, relative to the impact we were having on people, we touched so many more. And it struck me, we are truly in the people business, not the animal business, and we enrich people's lives. You know, who is an impact of by pets and meat, milk, eggs, and fish? And it was a stark realization for me that between protein in our diets and companionship of pets, we offered a solution to some of the challenges, the biggest challenges of people that they were trying to solve, and we touched the mass majority of people on this globe. And we have a huge opportunity to change the context of the significance of what we do. Uh, that's, that's really great. So you mentioned challenges at the global level and in society. So what are some of those challenges? Yeah, well, today we probably take uh, our pick of all the global challenges, right? But uh, I think you can break this down when you start to look at fundamental challenges in the world today. When you watch news or anything else, it can be in really these categories, physical and mental health of people or the health of the environment. And so if we break that down even into these three, let's dig in. I think our civilization is more advanced than ever before, right? Right. But we have the, and we have the technology, the science that, uh, that solve a lot of these challenges, but we haven't. And you got to ask yourself, why haven't we? For example, in physical health, more than 10% of our global population today suffers from malnourishment. Um, while hunger, you know, was bottoming out and declining for quite a few years, it's back on the rise. I, I say one out of four people today, think about this, Michelle, are suffering from what we call hidden hunger, meaning they aren't getting the right food. Obesity rates, as we know, continue to rise each year. 
672 million people today are obese. Two times the population of the United States globally is obese. We have more research than ever on what it takes to be healthy, but it's never been more confusing than it is today, I believe. And then you move from physical over to the mental side, which, you know, there's just constantly, I don't go through a conversation on a weekend or over a dinner when someone doesn't have you know, some relation directly or indirectly with someone struggling with mental health. Social isolation and anxiety are at all times high right now globally. Our social communities, the number of confidants you have has shrunk by a third. In America, one in five millennials are lonely or say they have no friends, despite being the most interconnected generation through the internet than ever before. Social isolation, loneliness, living alone has a significant effect. Uh, on the risk of mortality, it's, they say, the, the equivalent of obesity, uh, loneliness itself. Being disconnected poses danger comparable to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. I, I read that recently. And teens that spend five or more hours a day on their devices are 71% more likely to have at least one risk factor for suicide, regardless of the content that they're consuming. So we're more connected than ever before, Michelle, but I think yet we're more isolated maybe than ever. So those are the physical and the emotional sides. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah, you bet. You know, and as, as you move to the environment, last year we used resources 1.75 times faster than the global ecosystem can replenish them. So the, the balancing day when you've used up the resources you should use for the whole year has moved now from August into July. We're headed towards the, the midway point. Um, we're more aware of our environmental impact than ever before, but uh, continue to use our resources faster than ever. Uh, so we've got major issues in these three areas, and where does that leave us? I think a multinational study found that this is the first generation expected to live a shorter life than their parents. Hard, hard for me to believe as a father of, of six kids. Our civilization has advanced so far, and yet we're going backwards. The world is demanding a change, and you see that in the news today. Yes, you, you definitely do, Jeff. And wow, that's, that's a lot of uh, fundamental challenges you've listed there. And I think plenty of people would relate and agree that we're facing issues in those areas. But I'm surprised we're not making much progress. Yeah, you know, all the innovation, I agree, all the advancements we have, and we're not just stuck, but in some areas, I believe we're going backwards, which is why I really think unless you change the context of how you think about it, how we think about animals, and you change your lens, then I think you just continue down this path. We all are in our own lane with our heads down, and I don't think we've realized the significance of the areas we're in, like the areas that you and I are in, in the areas of animals. Absolutely. With that in mind, let's change the context and explore this idea of animals being an X factor that can unlock solutions to some of these big global issues. How can healthy animals make an impact? Yeah, so let's grab a hold of this. I think farmers, veterinarians, all of our constituents, people in animal health companies and genetic companies, I think we all need to say, okay, quite simply, let's grab a hold and be accountable. We believe healthy animals are that X factor and they can, healthy animals can unlock these unseemingly um, disconnected issues of physical, mental, and environmental health. Uh, healthier animals can make an immediate impact. We, we see that, whether it's an emotional connection we have with our dog or the critical element that I believe protein plays, meat, milk, eggs, fish, to our diet and to our existence. So those, those are some factors that I believe put animals and healthy animals into this, hey, we can be a variable to have a game-changing effect on these issues. Right. So let's hone in on that and start with physical health. What role do animals play there? Yes, let's start, you know, healthier animals. I think they, they provide a unique health benefit. Uh, they enable us to rediscover uh, how we live life to the fullest, maybe starting on the pet side especially. Uh, the crux of obesity, if you move over to that side, a malnourishment problem, it's the lack of availability or access to healthy food. Uh, healthy animals can balance these scales by providing you know, access to critical healthy proteins. We know that when you have access to that, 
and uh, your diets change, especially at a younger age, everything, the trajectory of life changes. Meat, milk, fish, and eggs are a critical part of a balanced diet. Uh, they provide a substantial amount of nutrients, essential, really hard to replace with alternatives to a healthy lifestyle. And, and that really gets to the physical and the cognitive development and sustainability of life. Uh, in China, very interesting, a big deal, I think, um, and more and more is going to be talked about this, I believe, over the next five years, is uh, in, the, in the whole area of stunting. A study found that a single egg in an infant's daily diet can cut the prevalence of stunting by a half. A major protein, retired CEO in Africa right now, his number one metric trying to spread protein, especially chicken production across Africa, is reduce stunting has become his life's mission because he believes it's one of the biggest uh, really ethical problems that should be unaccepted by us as people today. In Kenya, the addition of animal protein in children's diets resulted in a 15% increase in IQ scores. And look, pets, companion animals also encourage a, you know, a healthy lifestyle with just increased physical activity as a father of not just six kids, but a new puppy in the house. Um, the cell phones are down, the activity is up, and we're spending a whole lot more time talking to ourselves because of a new Labrador puppy in the middle of the living room. Wonderful. So let's go ahead and shift then to mental health because that's another fundamental challenge. So what's the connection to animals there? Yeah, they, you know, I think animals increase us by helping us, as I mentioned, rediscover life beyond our devices. We all are connected to these devices and the statistics are staggering. Uh, the rise of technologies led to increasing isolation. We know this in loneliness, which plays a critical role in the health of our society. Uh, studies have shown that pet ownership is associated with higher levels of social capital or just connection with your community. Our pet helps us meet people. It forces us to venture outside. It encourages us to act a little silly and be more playful. And those connections matter. Um, around 40% of pet owners studied said they have received some type of support, such as emotional or informational from people they met through their pet. So uh, it does allow us to be more connected. Imagine the impact of a society that feels supported and connected. Imagine what a decrease in depression would do and could do for communities, our workforces, our families, our economies, candidly. Uh, it would have a ripple effect beyond just this generation. So owning a pet is a bigger deal. And it can, it can lead, I believe, to human companionship, improved mental health, and a change in a family. So you mentioned that we are in an age now where we see the rise of technology really, really uh, take place in society. Um, and I'm sure many of our listeners have heard or seen, if not one, but multiple reports concerning the health of our environment. Which is the last bucket of fundamental challenges you listed earlier. So how do you believe animals play a role in positively impacting this fundamental challenge? Well, I think you got to start with the first word, which is healthy, healthier. Um, we can't walk away. Animals are going to exist. Animal protein is going to continue to grow at an exponential rate. Um, why? Because of diets, because of the micronutrients, as you know, because of the quality of it. Um, so that, that's a fact. So what do we need to start with? Healthier animals. That means more protein with less environment. Healthy food uh, animals allows us to produce more with less Healthy food animals also do for the environment what we can't. And I think we need to understand the role of, of animal production, the role of agriculture on this. Animals are the original recyclers. In fact, 86% of the feed livestock is what they eat is made of materials that humans don't or can't consume. Uh, cattle eat you know, byproducts such as distiller's grains and convert them into healthy milk and meat. So truly thinking about an animal as a recycler and the role they play in the environment is, is definitely changing the context. Absolutely. So I don't know if you've heard this catchphrase, Jeff, but there's this new trendy catchphrase that's circulating throughout the industry in that ruminants are the great upcyclers. And it goes back to that concept um, where, again, we've got ruminants, which are these livestock animals that have a specialized stomach, right, to ferment what they eat through microbial actions. And because of that, they can then take that low quality forage or old discarded food materials, 
suitable for humans, right? But we can then turn them into high quality protein or products of higher value, right? So a uh, really, really neat concept that I know is circulating throughout the livestock industry because it's a great story to tell. And again, goes back to that, that, that change in context and connecting animals to the health of the environment. Outstanding. Very good. I agree. Jeff, this has been a great discussion about some big issues we're facing as a society and your strong belief that healthy animals have a role in helping to solve them. Now, I'd like to know what was your aha moment when you knew that we as a company, as an industry, and as individuals needed to talk about this? Yeah, you know, I think uh, this, this is, again, we have to, as a industry, as leaders, have to see the role you play in society. Great companies, great organizations, great communities need to say, well, what's, what's the role? We know this next generation wants to have purpose. And so to me, uh, purpose is truly saying our connection to society and how we make it different is, is this. And to me, um, when I look globally at Elanco, a hundred countries, all kinds of different personalities with a crazy society out there right now that is quite divisive. What I see that brings the most unity is when people see the importance of the purpose and the role that we play as a company. We say food and companionship enriching life, the two words that galvanize, you know, almost 6,000 families, not just employees around the world, is we can enrich lives. And we do that with healthy animals. A, a Labrador, a, a cow, a, a nice breakfast in the morning with eggs and bacon, it can change the world. And we got to play a role in this and we got to lean in. So my aha was standing in front of groups over the course of the last year in times of change externally, I saw the unity internally by the bonding of uh, the, the, the significant role we're going to play on society going forward. Wow, that is some great insight on how this thought of rediscovering the power of healthy animals truly translates to Elanco and our vision. Now, I'd like to get a bit more personal. I'd like to know why you're so passionate about this topic, not just in your professional role, but why are you personally so passionate about healthy animals? Yeah, it's been, a, you know, I'll, I'll start first, uh, a farm boy, and then coming into Elanco in 30 years, um, I, this to me is, there's, there's a few things that are just uh, my purpose. One is anyone that is hungry and not just that they don't have food, but they're eating the wrong thing or they've not been given that uh, right trajectory of the right diet because they didn't have access to meat, milk, eggs, and fish. I believe animal protein is the differentiator to a life. And, uh, and, and so many of these issues we talked about. So it's become my family's purpose, whether it's my wife and I very vested in a food bank that feeds over 500 a week um, and creating, you know, a, a area of dignity for people, but people to be able to get really good food or our involvement in a nonprofit where we're putting, you know, thousands of families every week. A dozen eggs changes the morning for a family. It changes the kitchen a dozen eggs where people can can slow the morning down, have a good breakfast, and then we know it changes the classroom for those kids. Those are examples. Or, yeah, the new puppy, Lily, that's in our house now, being able to see six different personalities, seven including my wife, how they interact with that dog. You see the family's personality come out through a pet, but more importantly, our connection's probably been higher than it's been in years the last couple months with that dog in the house. So it's, it's bigger context, but it then can be very small context in the day-to-day -day changing of lives and stories that you see in the moments that really matter. That's, that's my purpose. That's my why. And that's why this is extremely personal to me. This has been great, Jeff. I can say that as an Elenco employee, I'm really excited to start this conversation and continue to advocate for animals at work and at home. Before we wrap up today, we'd love to learn a little bit more about you in a segment we're calling the Fast Five. During each episode, we'll ask each, each of our guests five fun, easy questions, and you get to be the first. So here we go. All right, let's go, Michelle. Okay. Number one, how would you describe your job to a student in one sentence? Um, fast and changing with the best people. Great. <laughs> so number two, what is your favorite animal? A Labrador. Labrador puppy. 
and and that's the puppy you've got at home. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. But we, I, I think it's our fourth Labrador since okay. I, since a kid. So black labs are. I'm I'm a water guy too. So there there's a connection. There you go. All right, number three. Who is your biggest role model in your industry? Yeah, it would be Donnie Smith. I think uh, that was uh, running Tyson Foods for some time. Purpose, seeing the bigger context. Uh, speaking out, a lot of courageous uh, leadership, and now a servant, living it out. He's the individual in Africa. Great. Number four, what podcast or book would you recommend? You know, Deep Work is a great book that gets you to think about slowing down and thinking about things like animal protein and the X Factor. It's a, it's a great book, and there's some good podcasts linked to it as well. Wonderful. And it's a great tie to the podcast. So good to have add that on our list. Uh, and last and final question, and I know this one will be tough for you to narrow down. What is today's greatest challenge that animals can positively impact? I think it's diet. Um, I, I can say just in my own family, communities, just dropped a son off at college back in my home area of upstate New York. And you see the differences in communities and people and families um, by what they eat and how they eat and the problems and the good things on both sides that that causes. I think meat, milk, eggs, and fish change the trajectory and this statistic that is unacceptable to me that this next generation is going to live a shorter life than this one is, is a wrong that we must turn quickly to a, a whole different statistic quickly. And I think, I think animal protein does that. I don't know if that's a fast five, Michelle, but there you go. <laughs> Well, hey, those are great responses, and thanks for letting us get to know you a little bit better. Uh, before we close, do you have one final thought you'd like to leave for our listeners? It's time to grab a hold, uh, take the wheel. Um, we can't any longer in agriculture, in animal production, in animal health, any node you link to this, um, there's two kinds of people. There's, there are truly those that are watching, critiquing, speaking about it, and then there's people that are doing it. I think what you're doing here, Michelle, with this podcast is, I hope, activating people to say, my role is this, and I'm leaning in, and there's, here's how I'm going to take action. We, we've got to move, and we've got to act, and we've got to be accountable in doing that. Great, Jeff. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining me today on the show. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion as we started rediscovering the power of healthy animals. But our journey has just begun and there's so much more to uncover. Stay tuned to our next episode where we'll unpack the impact that animals have on our physical health with Dr. Shabir Simji. You can find more information at elanco.com forward slash rediscover. Thank you for listening.